What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we are playing one of the greatest duelists in all of League of Legends and that is of course Fiora. She is an absolutely amazing champion, she's super fun to play, she has high mobility, insane damage whenever you hit the vitals, good sustainability, like... She's just overall really fun and she's one of the best duelists in the entire game. Meaning that you actually really pick this champion to win the early game. But actually also becomes pretty strong in the mid to late game. But we'll get much more into that. Um, there is kind of a steep learning curve on Fiora. So kind of, uh, what do you say? Uh, get used to, no, don't not get used to, but like, yeah. Prepare yourself for that. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, she has a bit of bad wave clear until she gets her tier mat. So that is what we will be rushing. And then she's an absolutely amazing split pusher because of her duelist potential. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are new in here, then this video will solely focus on how to play Fiora in the early, mid and late game. Meaning the macro play, the decision making of playing her. And I'll be using this game as kind of an example uh, to show you guys kind of my train of thought when playing her. Uh, apart from that, then if you are new in here, then make sure to go down below and uh, yeah, make sure to click that subscribe button. Join in on our new awesome community or not new. It's been here for a while, but it's kind of new to you. <laughs> but make sure to join in. It's been amazing to see the amount of support lately. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to see me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. I stream every single Friday. Uh, so yeah, let's kind of get into this one and also for just a slight side note for those of you who don't know the mechanics The abilities the combos all this stuff I've left a link for my other video down below where I show off all of basically explain the abilities how they work The combos the advanced combos and all of this stuff, but let's kind of just get into this one So Fiora is quite an amazing uh, duelist as we talked about she has a really good power spike when she gets level 3 and also level 6 um, this is some uh, place you want to play around. You also want to see if you can get the level 2 power spike before your enemy. But because of my intro, I kind of just gave that away. Uh, so we will be trying to kind of catching up. But yeah, here in the early game, then what we want to be doing is that we want to be poking our opponent as much as possible by hitting the vital spots. Sometimes you can get these vital spots that are in kind of an awkward position, just like this one, where it basically is below the target. What you can do is you can actually reset this vital spot fairly easy. Uh, I'll show you guys just after we've removed this vital, but basically you can see the new vital spawning right there. Oh, we need to make sure we don't lose this cannon. Uh, you can see this vital that might be a little awkward if we walk away, then it's going to respawn uh, on the opposite side whenever we go close. So now you can see we have that one. That's kind of hard to hit. So we'll go here and we know it's then going to spawn here or here. So as we come back, that's a lot better for us. We'll go over vital spot hit and then we can go back away uh, for when the next one respawns. And we can make sure that we only get a vital spots that are in a position where we can actually hit it. Um, so right here, we, I can see I'm, we're getting a gank. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, make sure that we uh, turn this into an actual kill. So there we go. Really nice. Thank you, Skarner. I appreciate it, man. Um, but yeah, sorry. Uh, and no problem, dude. I appreciate the gank. Um, so basically what I mean with this is that you can also always ensure that you, you get vital spots that are in a, in a, a, a position that makes sense for you. Uh, so every time you get a bad vital spot, which you're going to get every second time, you can get that one, then we can run away. You can see this is pretty bad, so we're going to go over here, reset it, come back. Now it's going to be there or there, because they're always going to be spawning on the opposite uh, kind of, I don't know if you can say side of it, but like either it's going to spawn there or there, or there or there. So right now it's on the bottom side and this side, so next one will spawn uh, oppositely. So if we go away here, I know the next one's going to spawn right you can see you right there as i said i'm gonna spawn there or there all of these pings are probably getting making my team a bit uh, okay thanks it, this is really nice all these gangs but really well i was just pinging to make a point <laughs> anyway super nice that we have a good jungler i'm just gonna say thank you very much uh to this dude because he's doing a pretty good job i i appreciate it it does make it a little a little easier while we're explaining to uh to win this. 
um, 100%. Even though we should be able to beat this guy up on our, our, our own, it's super nice to get a little bit of help. <laughs> All right. So I hope that kind of makes sense with the vital spots that you can also always reset them and make sure you get vital spots that are easy for you to hit so you don't have to maneuver all the way around people this is a lot better so yeah here in the early games we want to make sure that we hit as many of the vital spots as we can and we just kind of reset them uh for whenever we uh we have a bad vital spot of course you don't want to be losing out on too much farm or you don't want to be losing out on on farm in order to reset a vital unless you absolutely have to so with fiora we want to be poking as much as we can on the vital spots and then from there we want to be looking for an all-in once we have poked them down to a kind of a level of hp where we feel comfortable going for an all-in but otherwise we can kind of just keep this thing going and keep poking um so let's talk about the, a, like a kind of a few scenarios like if you're pushing the enemy up under their turret, then yes, you can actually just go ahead and poke them under their turret. That's very, very viable. Let's check what we're playing against. I think against this, I'm actually going to go for... I'm going to go for uh, play dead, to be honest. Both things would be viable here. They do... Ah, uh, maybe we shouldn't. Okay, well, this is like 50-50. I like play dead more, but seeing as they both have Elise... Is Israel mid? I think he might be AP. We should be going... Okay, we should actually be going Mercury's Threats. We'll change that, I think. I think we might just... Uh, yeah, we might change that. All right. So, we currently have Miss in top lane. But yeah. Basically, we picked Fiora to win the early game. She's a really good duelist. As we talked about, you should really be winning lane with her most of the time. Especially as you get experience with her because she's an absolute beast. I think there might be a chance that we... That, that this... Uh, Olaf actually tilted. I think so. I think Olaf might be AFK. I hate when this happens. This really this makes it a lot harder for us to show how how to play this champion if people literally go AFK. Just because we got some ganks. Well, we're gonna hope that he's gonna come back in a moment. He's hoping that he's just looking for an item in his item shop for a very long time. Okay, I missed that one. We could be looking for a TP play down here if necessary. I don't see anyone that we can TP to. This kind of sucks if he, he went AFK. I think he did. I actually think this guy went AFK. I'm going to go ahead and ask the enemy team. Olaf AFK. Question mark. All right. But yeah, if you push them under turret, what you can do is you can make sure that you poke their vital spots with your Q. And every time you get a vital spot that you cannot hit, then you just go back and you reset your vital spots such that it becomes in a position where you can poke. This is super, super effective. Uh, so this is kind of what you want to be doing. As you go into the uh, kind of... Whoop, uh, as you go into fighting, we want to have a few things settled. Okay, Olaf is back. That's super. I really appreciate that. So I'm actually going to give this guy a little bit of time. I know this is weird, but I'm going to give this guy a little bit of time to just get a like a bit of uh xp because i actually want this guy to be somewhat i know this is weird like a guide where i freaking give the other guy a chance well uh, the thing is if i just stomp him now and he's this far behind i'm not really showing you guys much so i'd rather just give this guy a little bit of time to kind of recuperate and uh, and we can then use him to smash him and stomp him in the ground afterwards right guys isn't that a good idea <laughs> just <laughs> Is he literally attacking me? Bro, you do realize I'm a lot... I'm like, I'm ahead of you, bro. Don't do this. Don't do this to me. Okay, so we're giving him kind of a chance because I really want him to at least stand a minor chance. Um, and I just missed a cannon minion. All right, so some different things that you need to know on Fiora is, first of all, uh, you can use your, uh, your W, of course, to absorb any damage, which is super nice. So... Whenever you use this one, it's gonna it's gonna absorb damage, which is super nice. Whoop. I'm not gonna go all in on him. I could kill him now, but I'm not going to because I literally want this guy to kind of at least be level seven or eight. I want him to feel like a part of the game. Alright, so as I was saying, um, then your W, you can use it to absorb anything, even like a Vigar or old. You can W it like this, and uh, it, it basically just parries anything. Um, the same counts for any kind of snare, stun, etc. 
Uh, and if you uh, manage to pull one of these off, you stun the target. Most people know this from the ability. But what you can do is you can do what we call a QW combo that I think is very essential for the laning phase. And that basically, what this basically does is that it allows you to increase the range of your W. Because you're actually going to be able to pull like this QW. And you can see how far it actually reaches because we're going to be dashing forward with our W. This can be super useful against anything that really uh, tries to throw something on you uh, where you're like, I have to absorb this. But at the same time, you can get some damage off uh, and actually manage to stun the target if it's uh, an ability that actually uh, allows you to, to do so. So in terms of all this, I feel like we've reached a point where we're now going to start poking this guy a little bit back. I don't know why he's not backing fully off. He has no mana. Like, if I went all in on him there, we can literally kill him. But I'm going to wait till he's had his next back because I really want him to put up a fight. Um, I don't want to be, uh, be, be kicking a man that's already lying down. Uh, but he really is. He really, really is. But right here, you can see again, if we want to reset the vial, we go back and go forward. You can see now we have a vital that is a lot easier for us to hit. I'm going to poke this guy down. I'm going to let him survive. I'm not going to kill him. But yeah, that's going to be his flash, which I didn't really want to pull off. I would let him walk away. But hopefully he'll back off, get full HP. And then I will say from whenever we come back in lane, we'll play it. We'll play it like he's uh, he's actually been here the whole time and that he's not been uh, in a hell of a lot of trouble. So right here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually go ahead and sell that one. And we're going to go ahead and buy our boots. And I'm going to buy the Mercury's because of their setup. Uh, because they are building... Oh, is this guy actually building AD? Okay, well, considering this, we could... Seeing as Israel did go for this, we could consider going played it. But now I committed to the other thing. So we are now officially going Mercury's. Uh, but I thought this guy may, might be going AP. Uh, I did not look at his runes. Seeing as seeing his runes, I kind of... Uh, yeah, kind of see that he was going uh, for AD. But what the hell? Oh, please, please don't help me. Please, I want... Oh, my God. This is one of the few games where you're actually going to have issues with not getting too much help. Oh, wow. Also missed that. I really don't want any more help, Skarner. I'm super okay. I really, really just want to duel this guy. All right. So, yes, in the early game, you are a duelist. You want to go for these vital points and you want to poke the enemy as much as possible. And what you want to think about when doing this is that every time that you use your Q, you do get this healing if you hit the vital spot and movement speed, which makes it quite, quite unpunishing to go for. You can see right here, we reset it, get a new vital. This is a lot easier for us to hit, especially if I actually go for it. There we go. And right here, we're going to be able to go for a stun on that one. Oh, I'm actually, this is super awkward. I'm going to run away. I failed this super hard, honestly. I could have taken this pretty easily if I had just been able to maneuver correctly around my target. So right here, I did the right thing. As Elise came up, I had two options. I could have backed out, but I went for the, uh, what do you say, the, uh, the, the, the kind of arrogant route saying I can duel you both. And if I played my cards right, if I played this uh, perfectly, I could have pulled that off easily. Um, because I would have been able to hit all of my vitals on my ult, giving us the healing and literally being able to just smash these two people. But seeing as I failed it, it didn't was it wasn't worth it. And the save option there would always be to back out right away. So you want to be thinking about whether or not to do so. But I just wanted to show you that those plays are definitely possible. 1v2ing on Fiora is definitely possible. Um, and definitely something that you can do if you're really skilled at maneuvering her. The hard part about her is really maneuvering these uh, around these vitals. So you want to make sure to do so. And you can also use your W here to uh, hit a vital, which is really, really nice at range. So if you have a vital that is vulnerable, then you can hit that vital at range using your W, which is honestly just really, really good and really fun to do. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's kind of try and uh, and push this in. We'll put some division. Um, but what you need to think about if you're shoving the lane in is, of course, if you want to go for these pokes under turret, then you need a deep ward in order to have a bit longer reaction time on the enemy's ganks. 
So considering that, I'm gonna put a ward a bit deeper for us in order to do so. This Olaf has literally no mana left. I could just zone him here and that would be the best thing to do. But honestly, we just feel like playing a little bit mindless here. So we're gonna go ahead and we can even tower dive him with our ult. Uh, there's not that much he is gonna be able to do to it unless he has his flash. But it is, it would still be kind of risky one. But right here, reset the vital, go back in. You can see right there, it spawns. Now it's in a position where we can actually hit it. And we can actually just go for that one whenever he gets within a range. Okay, so it's going to be reset again. Now we're going to have a bad precision for that one. So we're going to have to make another reset. You can see now it's on the that lower side of him. And that's, of course, not what we want to do. All right, so pretty soon we're going to start moving into what we call kind of the mid game. Um, so right here, it's kind of annoying that he has so good wave clear right now. Whoop. Oh, the vital didn't spawn. Yeah, this is something that you sometimes happen is that the vital does not fully spawn before you actually hit it which, which can be a little annoying to, from time to time all right so as you move into the mid to late game then what you actually want to be doing is first of all you of course want to be keeping your farm up also you can go for roams to specifically the mid lane or of course tp plays to help out your team but where fiora really exists is actually at split pushing she is an absolutely amazing split pusher and this is something that you really want to do a play around um, the way you do this is that you look for, uh, you basically look for whenever there's pressure on other lanes, then you want to put pressure on side lanes. Uh, so let's say that an objective is coming up. We want to make sure that we, oh, whoop. Right here, I think we're going to go for the Olaf because he's pretty uh, low. I'm going to, I'm just going to go all deep for this. We should be able to beat this. There we go. Sweet. So Olaf was Oom. So, so we know for knew for a fact that we could kill him fairly easy. He didn't have too much to put up with. And then just going for the... Uh, whoop. Going for the vital spots. Kept us alive for long enough. Also, one cool thing with Fiora is actually you can use your Q on turrets. This is... For some reason, there's a. I see a lot of Fiora players not utilizing this, and that's something you really want to think about. Anyway, right here, we'll just shove this in, and then we'll go for a real quick back, because we have way too much gold, and we should have backed like a million years ago. But we'll make sure that we utilize this. We'll go for a back. Also, we could be taking the Rift Herald. I think I'll run straight there as we come back from base if he needs help. But we'll go back, we'll get our Hydra, and we will start building this one seeing as we cannot finish we'll build hp and also we need a far side ward because we want to be going for split pushing and the reason why far side ward is so good for split pushing is that it allows us to put these deeper wards into the enemy jungle giving us information about where the jungler is at specific times or points in time but yeah this is very important as you move into the mid game that you get that ward in order to split push if you're going for a split push um so Right here, it's going to be another, hopefully, free kill. As this guy ends his ult, I think, uh, or Skarner might... Okay, I think he used his ult already. We should be okay. So, we're going to poke him. Even though we aren't hitting the vital spot right now, it's fine. I just want to put this guy under turd. Because we're going to have the rift coming in. As soon as the rift jumps, we should be able to... Uh, it's running around here. Waiting for it, and that should be the kill here. See the vital spot on top, and we get that. Super nice. Or Skarner's been doing a really good job, by the way. Definitely been doing a good job. So let's make sure this one gets a second jump. All right, here. We should be able to get this turret very easily. That's the second turret. But yeah, as soon as we see four people on the map then we should be able to definitely just go for split pushes because we know for a fact that we can beat just about anyone in a 1v1 so this is something we want to be thinking about as if you're a playing player wow um right here i think i am actually just going to go ahead and go for it back i have a lot sitting on oh i know we can actually finish our trinity very soon we have scarner's backup right on our side i'm gonna put down a ward in here want to make sure that we get some vision going All 
All right, so we got to be a little careful at this point because we don't know where anybody is. So we're actually not really allowed to be this far out without getting information. I'm like 99% sure they don't have any vision here. So I'm actually going to feel safe standing here, especially as I can just run to the side and then dash over the uh, over the side here. So I'm just going to kind of catch this wave real quick because I, I don't mind. I want to push this real quick and I just want to absorb this gold such that we can back finish off our Trinity Force, which is going to be a huge item spike for us. So we'll do this. We'll run in here and we'll reset. And we have TP, but we're going to be holding on to this one. There's no point using TP unless we want to go help on Drake and create a 5v4 situation, which we actually might. So let's get the control ward. We're going to start moving. We're actually going to start moving directly to Drake. I'd rather help out here. Uh, seeing as this, this lane is still kind of pushed, they should have one person up there still. But yeah, here in the mid, mid game, what you want to do is you want to, of course, help with objectives if, if need be. But otherwise, okay, we don't need to be there. We'll just go top. Uh, but otherwise, what you want to do is you want to start split pushing. You want to see, okay, as long as you know your team can withstand a 4v4 or a 4v5, then you want to split push. And especially if you can drag the attention of one to two players top, especially if it's one and you know you can beat them 1v1, which you should be able to against most stuff. Then if you can drag that up there and then create 4v4 situations for your team, then generally speaking, that should be a good thing to do. Uh, the thing with Fiora is that she's not an amazing team fighter. Like, uh, she's not terrible, but she doesn't really have the greatest toolkit for it. Um, generally, just speaking, because she doesn't have that much heavy CC unless you land your QW combo on, a, uh, on an immobilizing effect, which of course you can. That's not 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 doable but it's something that you gotta be kind of aware of okay we should be able to actually just go in here and be a pain for this guy should be able to oh he still have should be able to get him down right there super sweet so right here we're gonna have a look around check where everybody is we do have pretty decent vision around us so we know if somebody's coming in through the jungle. I see three people down there already. Two are dead. So we can keep this push going. This is exactly what you want to do on Fiora. In the mid to late game, you want to try and split push. And you want to find these opportunities where their team is either going to have to sacrifice one thing or another or to occupy doing something else. You want to make sure that you use your Q to push the objectives like this. Uh, this is super important because you can see just how quickly we just threat like shreds through their objectives uh, we are going to be able to also kill this inhibitor real quick there we go all of them are going to be coming now so we're going to be backing out as quickly as we can we're going to be utilizing this one as mobility so what we want to do at this point is we want to clear out their jungle real quick and then we want to go back um and we want to get a, a new control ward because now we are going to be playing around the bot side and the reason for this is that we want to start shredding those tars. Going for mid split push does not make sense for us. Instead, we'll go down bot lane. This is also the best place for us to split push. And the reason for this is that the best place generally to split push from is uh, from the side the furthest away from the next objective. And I know this sounds kind of weird. Um, so right here, I know this is kind of a weird sale, but I really do want my control ward with me. Also, by selling that, we are going to be able to get a chain vest and I'm going to be going down bot. Uh, so I'm going to tell Jin, Jin, go help uh, mid and top. Uh, I'll split bot. All right. So right here, we'll just go down bot. We know we can we can literally uh, 1v1 any of them, even 1v2 some of them. So this is something we want to be uh, very aware of. I see that their release is coming down here. So I think I'm going to go through and kind of do a hit and play here. I'm going to go into one of the bushes here. Hope that, that she follows Jin. And I'm going to be waiting for the engage. Because uh, if these two smash each other, this at least comes too close to me. I can just go all in. All right. So three people are currently top side. I can go for a TP, but I don't think there's any reason to do so. Three, three mid uh, and one uh, top. So we can go in here. If Elise comes here, we can just beat her up real easy. So we'll just go ahead. We'll push. You can see that they're way too busy, too busy with other stuff. And this is what you want to utilize on 
uh, Fiora. As we get into a late, late game, then Fiora st starts falling off a little bit because you are not allowed to do these uh, very offensive split push fights or split pushes because if you do so, there is a good chance that they might finish a fight of, or win a 5v4 and literally just finish the game like that. So you want to be very mindful of, of as soon as we get like past the 35-ish point mark, like then you really want to stop split pushing unless you have an absolutely safe, uh, safe, what do you say, like scenario where you can do so. But right here, there is nothing safe about it. So we're backing out. Kind of just going to be waiting a little bit. I'm going to go catch this wave as it proceeds forward because I want to keep pressure down here but i don't want to get caught also we want to make sure we get vision oh i should have waited just one second i knew they were running up that way most likely um so i'm gonna keep pushing here this should be really good for us and we see that the, their nuno is still proceeding into the mid lane so right here we have two options we can tp or we can keep pressure so our team is doing awesome so we'll just keep pressuring and this is like split pushing on fiora is amazing like she is such a fun uh, champion to play so we'll do this yeah as we come into the late game uh you want to start thinking more about grouping with your team and in terms of team fighting then since fiora is not the greatest team fighter of all then what you actually want to be going for is that you want to be going for flanks onto their carries or onto their backline in general but again they're busy doing other stuff so i'm gonna make sure that i push a little bit here i'm not gonna stay out any further because i know for a fact that they're all coming down here for me now and i have no idea i did not keep a close eye on their hp so we're going to be backing off i see this guy oh is he coming for me oh he ran right past nice <laughs> that could have been really freaking scary so go ahead buy this and we'll start moving down bot side again um so really nice that Skarner just got an infernal soul for us really really nice um so we can go in mid, we can just catch this wave while we wait for a team to respawn. And as they do so, we'll start moving down bot side again and keep pressure on that lane. And this is generally like the thing that you need to, to have in your head is what is your purpose as a Fiora player? What your purpose in the game is to get pressure or keep pressure on side lanes, keeping your enemies constantly having to kind of uh, upweigh one loss against the other that's kind of what you want to be doing constantly on her that's what she's super good at doing uh you want to at all costs hopefully not get a game into a 40 minute mark because at that point it's going to start becoming really really difficult for you um it's going to start becoming really difficult for you uh to team fight because she's not the most amazing team fighter she's really good at small skirmishes against like two two to three people uh, or less that's where she really exceeds but again you can see our team is now fighting up there things are going half decent so we're going to make sure that at, at a pure minimum we're going to get this in hip most likely also the top inhibitor uh kevin is also split pushing we can probably even finish the game here with this split push uh so that's what we're going to go for you can see they're still too busy with the other side so i'm going to make sure that i just utilize the amazing pushing power that we do have on fiora right here we are going to be able to get another turret down and we're just going to keep this going as much as we can they're all going to be coming back so we're backing out now um so we got that in hip down now we want to be playing around top side again the thing with top side right now is that it's close to baron which is not ideal for us uh, so that's something we want to be thinking about so let's make sure that we just take their uh jungle or leap these parts of it here we go and as you can see, you through the whole game, we keep our farm up and we take all of these safe objectives that we can. Move in here. Should not have put that control ward and I should not be back in this bush, but we're doing it because we're kind of, I don't know, <laughs> kind of felt like it. So we'll get that one. And now we will actually, I won't buy this because we need new control wards. Uh, we'll run back up top. Okay, so if a fight breaks out, we, we can actually just go ahead. We can TP to our minions down here and rush this inhibitor down this is what i'm looking for it looks like it is actually erupting so i'm gonna be tp'ing it might not be going out as much as i thought but i think maybe it'll be fine i'll put some pressure on this lane have to make them decide between going for one thing or the other they're probably gonna see me a little too late at least i'm gonna get this inhib down real quick 
their entire team should be going for me now i think they are so we're gonna try and back off all right so at this point there's only one objective back that we can actually do much about and that's mid side so now we'll have to go group so as you guys been seeing like fiora even though she's like the one of the best duelists she's not only about playing duels and she's not about kills she's much more about playing the objectives and constantly playing kind of a chess game of one objective over the other so really think about this this should be a free kill thank you right here oh right there another one sweet so we're ending this game on a really 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 good note like you can see how much pressure like even though we haven't had a lot of kills we've been super fed because of all the cs we've been able to gather throughout the game but also all of the pressure that we were able to put on all of the side lanes like the primary purpose for playing fiora is putting pressure on the side lanes you're a super good duelist you can take 1v2 fights uh from time to time but you're also just really good in 1v1s of course if you can take 1v2 you can also take 1v1 uh but don't of course be too uh like go too deep in if you don't need to but kind of always kind of kind of account for where the enemy team is and what side lane makes the most sense for you to push like you saw try to to push the the side that is the furthest away from the next objective because this will like force the enemy especially as this olaf i think he was running ignite as far as i remember then the fact that we're the furthest away also means that we can use our tp to tp to a drake if our team needs help but the enemy team if they have a top laner that just runs ignite he's sitting in a scenario where he's like either i have to protect my top lane he runs up there then we win drake because we tp or uh if he doesn't go and he just goes for the drake we have two options we can just push in or we can go help drake but with our tp so it 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 like fiora is much more about much more about uh kind of making the enemy team constantly upway one loss over the other uh, and just kind of playing that card more than it is so to try and get a lot of kills even though fiora can literally also get a lot of kills she's quite an amazing champ to play but yeah, i hope you guys enjoyed this one i hope you learned a thing or two i know that the game was kind of strange and overall and i'm not saying that i played this perfectly in any sense i did not uh and there's a lot of better fiora players out there than me but i feel like it kind of came across how you want to be playing this champion in the different phase of the game early game you want to be trying to poke your enemies using the vitals uh and kind of playing around your strange as you get into mid game you want to make sure that you utilize the fact that you're such a good duelist you're good at split pushing you can also help on objectives but you want to try and strive for smaller skirmishes against like a smaller groups of enemies and lastly in terms of late game you do have to group with your team because otherwise the game might end you might have to group sometimes um but the, like when you do so and when you do go for team fights then you are probably going to have to try and look for flanks meaning you don't want to be going head into the fight you want to be trying to think a little bit like an assassin or something and try and find a flank onto uh the back line so onto their adc or onto their mid laner but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this one i hope it helped you out just a little bit i thought found this game really fun despite kind of the awkward moment of the olaf going afk for a second uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you are new in here, then make sure to click that subscribe button down below. Join in on our awesome community. It's been so insane seeing all the support. I really do appreciate it, guys. And if you want to see me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. I stream every single Friday. Uh, but yeah, with that said, that's kind of the last thing. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.